Ned Flanders was originally designed to be the perfect neighborino. So perfect in fact that Homer was hugely jealous of how much better off Ned's family appeared to his. Whether it was outshining Homer at Christmas or showing off his brand new RV, it seemed that Ned just did everything right. You and your son like each other. Your wife's butt <sighs> is higher than my wife's butt. You make me sick. But as the years roll by, ever polite Ned became more judgmental with his religious devotion taking over his life, ruling every decision he made. He even tried forcing his views onto others and soon became the ever watchful eye of God in Springfield. Excuse me, that's your salad fork? That Wi-Fi is for hotel guests only. This effect on his personality led to the term flanderization, where one aspect of a character's personality is increasingly given greater importance to the point where it consumes their entire character, therefore becoming their one defining trait. And even though flanderization is named after Ned, he's not the only Simpsons character to exhibit this behavior. The term jerk ass Homer describes the period where Homer's insolence was taken to extreme lengths, where he became mean just because it was supposedly funny, instead of serving any important character arc. In fact, many Simpsons characters have been flanderized at one point or another. The sad state of Mo and Barney's lives often overshadowed their storylines, while Ralph went from an unconventional dramatic talent Never! to that weird kid who was never potty trained. Why do people run from me? And flanderization extends far beyond The Simpsons, ranging from Brian in Family Guy to Ron Swanson in Parks and Recreation. Even Joey Tribbiani's Playboy persona in Friends was undermined by an obsession with food and the inability to string together a single sentence in French. Je m'appelle Claude. Je de coupe plow. <laughs> And the likes of Kevin and Creed in The Office started off as quirky but competent employees, but soon spiraled into cartoon imitations of their former selves. So I'd like to circle back and see how Ned has really changed. And if he has, when did it happen? How did it happen? And have the creators been able to turn him around? Hey, I don't go to where you work and read the Bible to you. I would embrace such a glad visit. So when was Flanders flanderized? To pinpoint when Ned was flanderized, it's important to consider his personality in the early seasons. He was simply a kind-hearted neighbor who, although showed flashes of anger, would quickly repent and take full responsibility. Therefore, leading onto the running joke that beneath Ned's joyful goody-goody nature hid a dark side, unleashed at the slightest sip of a tantalizing tipple of a blackberry schnapps. That's it, young man. No Bible stories for you tonight. <laughs> Most of Ned's early stories actually had little to do with religion, more focusing on Homer's jealousy toward his well-liked neighbor, who was quite literally the best Boy Scout. But there were exceptions, like his role as the heathen hunter when Homer quit church. God said to Noah, there's gonna be a flatty flatty. But their relentless chase sequence still worked because it was deliberately over the top, and Ned still tried his best to save Homer. It wasn't until season 7 that Ned's religious devotion began to alter his personality, leading on to him baptizing the Simpsons children without consulting Homer and Marge. This episode not only showed how boring the Flanders were in comparison to the Simpsons family, but also how Ned's beliefs now infringed on acceptable, normal human behavior. Ned's actions here might even be attributed to repressed emotions, building up to his infamous rant in season 8's Hurricane Neddy. Here Ned learns that expressing anger was healthy, but also allowed him the passage to become more judgmental of those around him. And this newfound self-righteousness transpired into him, leading a crusade against science when the whole town was fooled by an angel hoax. We've come for the angel, Homer. It's not safe with the unbeliever. I feel that the episode that really marked his character shift was in season 11's Alone Again Natra Diddley, dragging him through a whirlwind of emotions, from mourning more to dating girls, doubting his religion and then falling in love with it again, as well as introducing a potential new beau all in one episode. Now, my criticism of this episode has always been that it just threw Ned's character around at all angles. It would have been really good to have seen his events of this episode unfold at a slower pace, and perhaps it could have shown a better transition of Ned's character. 
This combined with the ever-expanding jerk-ass Homer, who seemed quite at peace with Killing Maud, leads fans to pinpointing this as the Golden Age ending, and me posing that this is the beginning of Ned Flanderization. And I'm here every week. Rain or shine. Yes, there have been clues before this to show this flanderization, but I believe this shows the most dramatic turning point for him. Therefore, ushering in a less level-headed Ned to one who would launch into a childish tantrum if he couldn't hear the word of God. So, how was Ned flanderized? From this point, Ned became increasingly reliant on his daily dose of vitamin church after Maud's passing, and this is certainly understandable to an extent, but it also suggests that Ned took on Maud's role in the show. She was always shown to be the more judgmental one in the relationship, attending Bible camp while Ned stayed at home to look after Rod and Todd. Oh, that's right. I was at Bible camp. I was learning how to be more judgmental. So when he took on her persona, it began to overpower his more likeable qualities. Seasons 15 and 17 arguably saw Ned in his most flanderized form. By this point, his stories were more ruled by his desire to force his Christian values onto Springfield. Now the show frequently pokes fun at religion, while also showing how faith can bring people together. But this era turned Flanders into a punchline for religious extremism. God put us here and that's that. He got evolution outlawed to promote creationism, which even led on to Lisa's arrest when she tried to teach Darwinism. Ned's meddling with the education system got so bad, it ultimately saw Lisa stand trial. And even after admitting defeat, Ned didn't learn, later preventing a fish from walking on land. Not on my watch. Ned's restrictive views not only centered on creationism and the education system, but also revealed worrying spouts of homophobia, even indicating that homosexuality was something to be cured. I did finish first in the walk for the cure of homosexuality. And these horrifying views weren't just contained in a Treehouse of Horror episode. He also deemed gay couples the enemy of Christians. Can't we all get together and concentrate on our real enemies, monogamous gays and stem cells? He even sprinkled in these views into his ridiculously violent biblical films. Plus, he didn't look too chuffed when Rod announced that he was gay. I believe he's saying he's okay. Ned also belittled other religions in a way he never did in the early years, aggressively bullying Apu over his Hinduism and went as far as comparing worshipping Shiva to idolising superheroes. Okay, he just pinched me! Well, where's your super team now? Now seeing other faiths as a threat to Christianity, Ned attacked the notion of reincarnation when Homer simply saw comfort following his mother's death. Oh, what a surprise! Joe Jesus Jr's gonna set us all straight. This aggression stood out in direct contrast to her earlier stories such as Homer the Heretic, which saw the characters of different faiths come together to rush to Homer's aid. No, now Ned became far more hostile to his friends and neighbours, and even developed his own god complex as he tattled on the townsfolk for the slightest offence. <coughs> This opens an incredibly important question. Where the hell is the guy who was happy with a burlesque house being in his town? Well, I'm convinced the house stays. In reality, the old Ned was never really gone, but the stories of his kind nature did become fewer and far between. And in fairness, there are plenty of reasons to get frustrated with living in Springfield, especially when you have Homer Simpson as a next door neighbour. So in one episode, it showed Ned briefly moved to the town of Humbleton, where he became the new town pariah. And the story was very sympathetic to Ned, up until the ending, where he learned absolutely nothing about judging others and immediately returned to wagging his finger at everyone and anyone. He enforced his judgement upon himself too, becoming more of a prude as the show went on. Ned called the police when Homer and Marge were being intimate in their own treehouse, and a flashback story revealed that he and Maud spent their wedding night keeping a teenage Homer and Marge apart. Oh, what better way to celebrate our wedding night than by keeping an unmarried couple apart? His devout faith and views on premarital sex also ended his promising romance with movie star Sarah Sloan. Unlike the Bible, I guess. This ain't gonna have a happy ending. 
He even later jeopardised his newfound relationship with Edna Krabappel when he quote-unquote forgave her for embracing an active dating life. You forgive me? You sanctimonious prude! Now, the difference in this season 22 episode was how Ned's behaviour impacted the story. Edna told him off for his conservative attitude and they worked through their differences. And this was arguably the beginning of the de flanderization process. There were still examples of his hostile nature, like punching Homer for hanging out with his beatnik parents, but thankfully Ned's unconventional views were used to create meaningful character arcs now. And quite honestly, Edna was the best thing that could have happened to Ned, as well as the forever sheltered lives of Rod and Todd. After Maud's passing, Ned had become a ridiculously strict parent, to the point where his overprotective nature was actively harming Rod and Todd's development in the outside world. Well, we're gonna do what every kid your age likes to do. Look at bread. Edna brought them out of their religious school and into Springfield Elementary, and they actually enjoyed experiencing a regular childhood. Ned even had a nightmare about his boys attending a fancy university instead of a religious college, suggesting he wasn't always looking out for their best interests. But Ned trusted Edna, who helped him realise not everyone will agree with his views, and that's something he desperately, desperately needed. Is Ned still flounderised? So, maybe everybody doesn't love Ned Flanders anymore, but I'm sure he's slowly returning to the selfless and well-meaning neighborino of the early years. Flashback stories emphasized his tolerance and friendship with Homer, and the last instance of his religious devotion interfering with his personal life was in the season 31 episode, when he made Todd stay with the Simpsons after the boy questioned his faith. But by this point in the timeline, Ned had lost Edna, which might explain his controversial parenting and his decision to get drunk with Homer. At the end of the day, Ned is a single parent trying to do right by his kids in an exceedingly wacky town, but he does have his flaws, like any other character in the show, and that's why we like him. Edna may have passed on, but she continues to have a strong and positive effect on her husband. When a down on his luck Ned struggled to hold down a job and doubted his capability as a teacher, Bart reassured him that he could almost be as good as Edna Krabappel. Bart's belief in Ned and his determination to honour Edna showed Ned was beginning to return to his characterisation in the early years. Recent seasons have depicted a Ned who is becoming less judgmental than he was throughout the previous decade. Instead of condemning Bart for reading Edna's old diary, he instead took a peek himself and continued her legacy by making Bart feel better about his misunderstood potential. You were nothing to sneeze at, son. Well, did that help? Yeah. This softer attitude continued in the two-parter A Serious Flanders, which emphasised Ned's friendly and accepting nature and served as a reminder of why Flanders became such a beloved character in the first place. Now it's too early to tell if Ned's flanderization is gone for good, but The Simpsons never truly lost sight of what made Ned so hilarious and so endearing. It's no coincidence that he went through a darker period between Maud's death and marrying Edna, and Ned losing his way arguably makes him far more relatable than the show is given credit for. Ned tried to overcorrect his life by acting like a sane, but maybe, just maybe, he was a broken man trying to make sense of a world that had repeatedly kicked him down. And so I feel that comes to the end of the video, and I want to hear your thoughts. When do you think the flanderization was at its deepest and darkest? And did you recognise a change in the character when you watched the show? And if you're willing to give Neddy some love again, then click that like and subscribe button, and I'll smell you later.